Hi everybody, welcome to Simply Scuba and Top Tip Tuesday where I run through some helpful tips that I've picked up over the years and today we're running through some tips for instructors and teaching professionals. Stay calm. When things start to go wrong, and trust me, they will, uh, it's very important for you to stay calm and sort things out. The entire group is going to look to you should something start to go sideways. And if you're frantically trying to do something, then everyone else is going to start to get anxious. If they see a nice and calm instructor sorting the problem out, then they will stay calm and you're much more likely to have a positive outcome. Be early. As an instructor, you are now a morning person, whether you want to be or not. On time is five minutes late and you should always be the first person to arrive to get everything sorted and have a look at what the water is like and all the conditions and things. You need to allow for absolutely everything and be pre-prepared for it. Vehicles have plenty of fuel in the tank already, cylinders are all filled and all of the relevant documentation is with you and it's organized because you already did that yesterday. Be prepared. As early as you can, make sure that your classroom is nice and tidy and it has everything that you need and all of the gear that you're possibly going to need is ready and where you need it to be. I like to mentally run through the entire day in my head, a day or two ahead of time, so that I know that I've thought of absolutely everything that could happen and what could go wrong and that way I can think ahead of time what to pack and that everything that is packed is what I need. There's no just popping back to the dive center because you've forgotten some prop or slates. So ahead of time, preferably a day or two, just go through everything in your mind and make sure that you have everything that you need. Avoid mirrored lenses on your mask. I know mirrored lenses are cool and they, they can help to protect your eyes and do clever things to the light as it comes in. But underwater, students need to be able to see your eyes for some good old fashioned non-verbal communication. If they see calm eyes, it's gonna help to calm them down as well. If they only see their own panicking face in the reflection of the eyeless face of their instructor, that's not going to help. So pop the mirrored mask away for your fun dives and get yourself just a traditional mask that you can teach in. Bring a spare everything. The most obscure thing that you can think of can and will go wrong while students are kitting up before a dive. I mean, we once discovered that a student's inflator on their dry suit didn't match the inflator hose on our regulators. So you need to be the one to find a workaround and fix the problem to replace it with something with what you have on hand. But with that, do not cut corners. If you cannot fix the problem so that it's safe to go diving, you just have to call the dive and reschedule it for another day. It sucks but it's far better to call the dive than to dive dangerously. Sometimes you need to be the bad guy. An instructor with a 100% pass rate is not a good instructor in my opinion. Now, that doesn't mean that you should be mean or anything, but you do need to be the one that makes the decision not to sign somebody off or to do something again until they get it right. You also need to be a bit of a counselor and talk to people. You need to talk them through certain things because scuba diving is a big deal for some people and they're dealing with some real inner personal fears that you can never understand because you're a professional diver, but you need to be compassionate as well. So you need to be firm, but also approachable and be able to talk people through some real personal fears. Be slow. You cannot demonstrate skills slow enough to students. Everything needs to be a bit of a routine that you're gonna build yourself and a bit of a show that you build over time. You'll take certain parts when you're teaching of certain courses from your instructor that taught you and you're gonna add some of your own flair to certain sections and it's a bit like a stand-up comedy act. You're gonna learn which bits work with students and which bits don't and you're gonna stop doing those and focus more on those, focus on just what works. But 
whenever you're showing a skill, be slow and emphasize everything. I mean, I was taught to break down each and every skill into at least five different sections and you don't progress onto the next section until you've passed over the previous step. So really slow, break it down and it makes it far easier for students to understand. You are always working. When you're in front of students and other divers, you are always an instructor and you represent your dive center, so act like it. You can switch off and you can chill out with students, but just be sure that you know your limits and what you can and can't say or do. Nobody is gonna trust an instructor that they saw absolutely plastered last night dancing on the table, so just make sure that you're always acting professionally and you always have your boundaries. Go on fun dives by yourself. Personally, I spent a long time early on when I was teaching where all of my diving was just teaching. Whether it was a tri-dive, a scuba review or courses, all of my diving was with students. It's important for you to take some time for yourself and just go diving without students from time to time. It lets you switch off a little bit and really enjoy the dive a bit more without having to just turn around every so often to check on students and making sure that everyone's okay. So do be sure to book some time for yourself and just go diving. Read the signs. The best thing that you can do as an instructor is to take your time becoming an instructor. Spending that time a good year or two with some real students in the water is going to teach you the little telltale signs that people start to show leading up to an incident. So that the next time you see someone do something twitchy or equipment make that certain hissing noise, you can intervene and calm the situation down before it even becomes a situation. And there were 10 tips that I could think of for new instructors and dive professionals who want to get into teaching. But if you have any helpful tips for prospective instructors, then by all means, let them know down in the comments below. After this, head over to simplyscuba.com for all of your scuba diving and apnea gear. Thank you for watching, everybody. And of course, safe diving.